phase one and the phase two. So the drills that we're going to be doing along the way are going to directly play into the phase one part of the motion offense, which is very scripted, very black and white. You do things this way every time, and we'll show that. And then there's other drills, the freelance lacrosse IQ drills that play into phase two, which is more of a freelance reacting to the situation. It's not the coach drawing out the X's and O's and saying, you go here every time. It's letting athletes be athletes, letting the kids react to what they see in front of them and make plays. And really that's the, I think, the, the goal is to be able to coach the kids to the point where you're not yelling and screaming from the sidelines to make this next pass. You want them to see it on their own. So that's what those freelance lacrosse IQ drills develop. And the, the end result is an offense that combines both a very scripted part of the offense plus a freelance part of the offense. So that's what we're driving towards here. We'll start out with the, the one-on-ones. So, with the one-on-ones, uh, you know, I'm a big believer that when you're running a, an, an offense, really any kind of offense, but particularly with this offense, the first thing you need to do on offense to gain an advantage is dodge. Somebody's got to dodge to beat somebody. You got to you got to make the defense slide. You know, that's how you're going to gain an advantage on offense. So, right away, early in the season, when you're running your one-on-one -on -one drills trying to identify the midfielders who can run by somebody and draw a slide. Maybe they can't shoot, you know, maybe they can't, they can't do that, but if they're athletic and they can run by somebody and draw a slide, those are guys that you're going to start your offense with. So when we're doing one-on-ones out here early in the season, from the, for the midfielders, we're going to work on doing one-on-ones from a specific spot on the field. So for right-handers, I'm going to do a lot of this from a right-hand perspective, just because most of your players are probably right-handed. But for right-hand middies, we want this dodging spot. It's nice and high. You know, maybe halfway in between the midline and the end of the restraining box. And we want the kind of dodge for these guys to be working on is a north-south split dodge to the cage. Okay, a really just, it's got that really north-south kind of angle to it. Um, it's called a sweep. You know, traditionally, sweeps can be also viewed as a dodge that kind of sweeps across and bends down. That kind of east-west sweep isn't really quite as effective as a north-south sweep. So really, at the beginning, talking about north-south dodging. Get up nice and high, get a good run at your guy, one split dodge, and go. You know, that's the kind of dodge that we're looking for from the midfielders. Something that you'll find is that when you do one-on-ones, especially in the younger, guy, young, younger ages, they want to do their dodge, and they want to continue, 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 and shoot when they're right on top of the cage. Obviously, it's not how it's going to work in a game. Someone's going to slide to them, and they're not going to be able to shoot right on top of the cage. So it's nice to sometimes put a marker out here, maybe 12 yards away from the goal. Maybe it's a penny, maybe it's a, the ball bag or something or a coach. And just reiterate with these guys as they're dodging that get rid of it, you know, shot. We want to see that shot about 12 yards away from the goal. And it's also a nice skill to develop for the midfielders where you, you want to get used to shooting with somebody kind of on you. You, know, you don't have to beat them by five yards to get a good shot off. You just have to have your hands free. So for midfielders, as they're coming down there, get used to shooting, getting shots off with somebody kind of on your hip there. You know, that's a, that's a nice skill to develop as a midi. Um, so that's what we're looking for out of the middies. That's the, that's the number one dodging option. Most players are right-handed. Um, of course, we want all our players to be able to go right and left equally well. But the reality is that no one really can go equally well to both sides. So when you're talking about setting yourself up for your strength, or setting yourself up for success, it makes sense to, to try to set yourself up for your right hand. So that's why we really talk about this right hand midi dodging on this, from this part of the field, going forward his right. Okay, the complement to that is obviously going to be dodging and breaking it back down the alley. So this is always going to be our number one option. This is going to be the number two option. So I think when you're, when you're teaching dodging from the midfielders that we really want to harp on this sweep. Get that sweep going. Get the sweep. Make sure they really have that going. And then you can also start to use the alley dodge. When you do implement the alley dodge, it's important that you have the guy get as far to the middle of the field as possible before breaking down the alley. Just so you have a better angle on the cage. If he just decides to dodge straight down the alley, you don't have a very good angle on the goal when you get down there to shoot it. How active is the 
Do you have, well, I guess the first question, how active is the defender and is it a coach or a player? You would, yeah, I didn't have him drawn in here, but you would have a defender in there, a player, um, and that would be a full one-on-one, -on -one, letting, okay. letting him go at the guy. And the, the, a lot of teams play this kind of Princeton-style defense where they take away the middle of the field, you know, and try to force players down the side. So it's a, it's a nice challenge if, if you do play that style of defense. It's a nice challenge for your offensive player. You know he's trying to keep you from the middle. Can you still get to the middle, even though he's trying to keep you from the middle? And it's a nice way to re reinforce with the defense. You better not let him get to the middle. You know, that's a nice battle to have with those two guys there. So getting to the middle, getting to your strength in one quick hard move. What you want to avoid here is that kind of back and forth dodging. You know, ass dodging, going just, it just takes up too much time, it doesn't get anything done. It also, when we start talking about off-ball movement, it makes it difficult for the rest of your teammates to, to move with you because you don't really know which way he's going. So you can't clear through until he chooses a side. And so that's with the midfielders. We, when we do this with the attack, we want to look at this dodge from behind the goal at X. Now it's, it's not really necessarily my favorite place to dodge from behind the goal, but in the flow of our six-on-six -six offense, that's where the dodge is going to happen. So we want to be able to drill that and make sure that our attackmen are really, you know, know what we're looking for with this dodge. And again, it's one move, maybe one quick split dodge, and come hard around. We're not looking for back and forth. One quick move and go. And then obviously for the attack, I'm sure you guys are all aware of that five and five, that kind of island that they're looking to get to before they make any kind of move. Get nice and high there before they make a move. If we're just talking dodging, I'm kind of step away from this system for a second. If we're just talking dodging for attack, I always think like the corners, if you're going to set up any kind of dodging for attackmen, that's just an attackman ISO. The corners are great places to dodge from because in this situation, you have to go away from the goal, away from the goal, away, and bear in, and bear in, and it's kind of a battle to get that and get in a really good shooting spot. You dodge from the corners, it's one hard top side move, and you're basically sprinting to that dangerous spot. So this is a much more kind of dangerous um, dodge for the attack, and I wish that this offense kind of, that was part of it, but unfortunately, this is the kind of dodge that's part of this offense. Um, but if you're building, you know, you could use this to build another offense around. And it could be something else. Okay, so that's the, the first part, dodging effectively, trying to get the defense to slide. One hard move and go. Very scripted, going to certain parts of the field, going for your strength, trying to get the defense to slide. Okay, we'll go to the next piece of this now, the off-ball movement. So a lot of times... Coaches coach what you do when you have the ball in your stick. You know, shooting, dodging. The, the off-ball part of the game doesn't get as much attention. And I think it's probably as important, if not more important, because you know, and the way I break it to the kids at camp when we're teaching at camps is think about if, you, if, if you're playing offense out there and everybody on your team touches the ball equally, what's the fraction that represents the amount of time you have the ball in your stick? And eventually the kids come to one-sixth. It's like, okay, so five-sixths of the time, you don't have the ball in your stick. So if you're going to be good at offense, you better know what you're doing those five-sixths of the time. So it's a way to kind of show them the importance of really getting good at off-ball movement. Um, the simplest way that I know to teach off-ball movement is this idea of a one-on-one -on -one plus two. So this is just a continuation of one-on-ones. If we're looking at our midfield situation up here, he's got a defender on him. And okay, so that's our one-on-one. -on -one. They're going just like they were before in the one-on-one. -on -one. The plus two means plus two. And these guys don't have defenders on them. All they're doing is working on their off-ball movement. So you have the one-on-one -on -one happening live, and you have off-ball movement happening. I, I like to either have this midfielder or a coach up here with the balls, throw the ball to the Dodger, and then go. You know, I don't like to have the Dodger just kind of pick the ball off the ground blow the whistle and go, the more game-like you can make it where they're receiving a pass and dodging right away, I think is a nice thing. So we get the pass to the, the dodger. These guys are going to anticipate him coming for his strength. Okay? But as soon as that pass is made, we know he's the dodger. We know we have to get ready to move off ball. Come on in, guys. 
Guys here. Girls down the way. Yep, two doors down. Excuse me. Yeah. So we're uh, we're just right at the beginning here. You just missed this. Just the part I'm dodging. So not you. You're pretty close to the beginning now. Um, so. These two players are solely focused on their off-ball movement. As soon as the pass is made and we know this guy is the Dodger, these guys have to be super alert, especially the person adjacent to the Dodger. He's probably the most important off-ball player to make this work. And the thing that I like to teach these guys to do is as soon as the pass is made is to cheat halfway and cheat halfway and get into a spot now where you can see the ball, your, your eyes are facing the ball, and you're reacting now to the Dodger. The fact that you are able to cheat halfway there puts you in a position that you can react either way to where the Dodger goes and be in good shape. So you cheat halfway, he makes his move and he comes. Now we're going to continue through, and this guy's going to continue up around the outside. So you see what I have here, those first two things under off-ball movement, clearing space and balance. So in this drill, we've got clearing space and you've got balance. And those are two important things that you can do within your off-ball movement. So you know, when you're teaching off-ball movement to the kids, it's like <clears throat> giving them things that they can do when they don't have the ball in, your stick, in their stick. You can clear space. That helps the team. You can balance the formation. That helps the team. You can set off-ball picks, which we'll get to later. So just a couple important things, but an easy way to show how you do this. It's also, you know, for younger guys, I've found sometimes that having cones out here gives a nice kind of spatial visual reference as to how far spread out you want them to be, where the rotations go. So maybe putting cones out there can be a nice idea. At, at this point, have you told the kids they're kind of in a triangle and they're, they're clearing space to the next spot in the triangle and balancing the triangle? Yes, yeah, I think that's a good way, a okay. good thing to do. Yeah. And you're not going to pass to them? They're just, they're just, they're just clearing space? Exactly. They're just, okay. Exactly. They're not really in the play yeah. except to work on their rotations. Yeah reading the Dodger. So, you know, this Dodger, ideally we want him going for his right, but if he goes here and here, these guys have to be aware enough to go, oh, okay, I have to balance, and now I have to clear through. Right. You know, that's the idea, is that they get good at reading the Dodger and moving appropriately out of that. In the drill, do you want that guy to, to continue on and take a shot? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then you can run the exact same drill with the attack back here. So you've got your attack in D, your one-on-one -on -one right there. This is your plus two out here. These guys are solely working on off-ball movement. So the pass is made. We know he's the dodger. Our two off-ball guys are going to cheat and cheat and get to a spot now where they're ready to cut through or to balance based on where the dodger goes. So when he chooses a side and goes hard that way, we're going to continue through to clear out and balance behind. Now, one of the things I haven't mentioned yet when you are moving off ball, clearing space and balancing, is to see the ball. Having your eyes up to see the ball. There's a phrase that I use called hunting the ball at the camps that kind of gets that point across with a little bit more imagery. Um, but hunting the ball is an important concept when you're moving around off ball. So it's not just that you're cutting through with your head down. You've got your eyes up. You've got your stick up. You're kind of waiting, hunting. If that guy goes, then you've got your, you're in a position where you can do something if the pass is thrown to you. Okay, so clearing space and balancing. That's just the easy way to show it here in a really slim down, you know, a one-on-one -on -one situation with a couple guys working on off-ball movement. Now, to, to make it a little bit more challenging and to really start to talk about the skeleton of our motion offense, or at least the first phase of it, we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one plus five. So now we've got both triangles going on out there. And this is a good thing to teach, you know, right before you're, you're really getting into your motion offense. Um, you want to start talking about the two triangles working together. You know, each independent triangle you've got working on their own now. You know, they know how to rotate within their own triangles. But can they rotate together, both triangles at once? And this is a nice way to show that. So you've got your one-on-one -on -one up top here with the midfielder. And then we're going to have five people rotating off ball on the dodge. So the same kind of, so let's see, the pass comes to the midi. Everyone else is going to cheat in their movements, cheat halfway. Okay, 
And these guys are all, right now, those, that cheating is all anticipating that we're going to dodge for our strength around to the right. And if that doesn't happen and he goes somewhere else, then obviously everybody's got to reverse. And that's one reason why that initial phase one scripted dodge, early when you're just teaching this, it has to be every time as a sweep. There's really no choice in the matter. And once you get that down really good and everybody's getting that together, then you can start to open it up a little bit. Okay, okay, maybe you don't sweep this time. Can we react to that? What's a sweep? The sweep would be, so going for your strength up here for this guy, coming around for his right. So sweeping across from one side Strong. of the field to the other. Okay. That we were talking earlier about sort of a, one way to think about a sweep is like an east-west kind of dodge like that. That's more of a traditional sweep, I guess, but I'm a much bigger fan of the north-south dodge. It's still a sweep, but we're really kind of going like that from one side of the field to the other. Okay, so now as this guy makes his move and comes hard for his right, everybody else can continue through on their movements, clearing space and balancing the formation. Okay, and you've got one guy dodging and five people moving together off ball. And that's, that's really what the first phase of the offense is all about. And that's what you get out of this one-on-one -on -one plus five. Why, why are they... It must be obvious to you, but why are the two triangles moving in opposite directions? So the idea is that we want to take potential sliders away from the dodger. So by pulling this guy through, we're taking this near defenseman out of the way. We're clearing space for this guy to go for his strength. He's a right-handed midi. He wants to shoot ideally right here. So we're going to take any defenders that might slide out of the way by taking this guy through, this guy out, this attackman all the way across, now you've taken a lot of potential sliders out of the way. So if you get good at this rotation and they get through early and open up all that space, you can get some decent shots just from getting a really good rotation on that. Can I ask you on a uh, purely uh, personal or uh, sure. selfish manner? Can you, yeah. use it? can you use a different color pen? Yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Pink, blue, black, gray. How about black? Man? Black, black is good. Black. Does it show up better? Yeah. All black. I can see it. That's pretty uh, good. That's why it's all pretty you know, selfish. Oh. For me. All right, man. All right. <laughs> we'll just redraw the whole field. All, all right. right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> My name's John, by the way. <laughs> now you have to send us that. Yeah. Actually, you might have to start all over just from the one v one now. <laughs> Dodging. <laughs> uh, okay, so one on one plus five from the attack back here. And this is a really important thing for the midfielders because it's not really as intuitive which way to, to, to rotate. This is going to be our one on one behind the cage. We know that he's a dodger, so we're going to cheat. Cheat. And in the midi, it's really hard to move until this guy starts going because we don't know which way he's going. So they kind of just have to be on alert there, ready to go. Once he does choose a side and start dodging, this guy's going to continue through. That guy's going to balance just like we've done before in the past. The midfield triangle now to rotate with the attack triangle. There's a, you, know, I don't, you have to figure out which way resonates best with your guys to explain it. The way that I like to explain it, or the way that in my mind that worked, was the backside midi is kind of coming to meet wherever this guy goes. You're coming from the backside to meet him. Okay? So if he comes this way, the backside guy is going to come. It forces this guy down, and this guy backs off to the backside. Um, I think I like it like this because I was always this left-handed midfielder a lot of times. <laughs> and with right-handed attackmen, when they would dodge, I would always be floating into a shooting spot where I was trying to catch and shoot out here. And so that made a lot of sense to me that when he came this way, I was coming, kind of following with him to the backside. Um, but however you want to explain it, maybe you explain it by saying if you're on the crease and this guy dodges, you don't want to go to him, you want to clear space by coming away to the backside. Or if you're this near midi, you want to take your guy through, you know, and it's going to be more of a shallow cut there. Take this guy out of there so you, again, this guy gets through. And you really open up this side then for the attackman to come in the dodge. 
is taking potential sliders away from the Dodger. Okay, so it's really just a one-on-one, -on -one, but now you've got your off-ball movement going in there too. Okay, the next, next piece is here. So the next things are a little bit more traditional, just straight two-on-two -two drills and three-on-three -three drills. And they're things that we've all done before, but I think you can look at them with a little bit of an off-ball focus, too. So from the midfield up here, if you've got a two-on-two, -two, I would start it by throwing the ball to the Dodger, and hopefully having the guy dodge again from that side of the field. When you throw the ball, you're going to cheat halfway, get in a spot now where you're ready to move either direction. If he comes your way, you're going to continue through, and that hunting the ball becomes much more, much more of a, uh, an important thing because you've got defenders out there, if that guy slides, that hunting the ball really comes into play because you want to have your eyes up and be able to, to be in a dangerous position and make a play if the pass comes to you. So what that means is as this guy starts dodging and I'm clearing through here, i got to be seeing the ball as I'm clearing through because if this defenseman follows, 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 and then he decides to slide, I better be able to stop and curl and get my stick up and be in a spot where I'm ready to, to catch and shoot. And so that hunting the ball really starts to play into effect there in the two-on-two. -two. Obviously, if this guy goes the other way and dodges down the side, okay, the first thing is you know, balancing up a little bit, but again, I want to be in the play here, so I'm not just going to take myself out of the play by balancing up top. If he's going further down and we're coming down, I'm really just waiting for my defenseman to slide. If my defenseman doesn't slide, then you've got a one-on-one -on -one with no slide, which is always a great situation. Okay? If this guy does slide, it's being in a position in a passing lane where you're not directly behind the defenseman, you know, finding a passing lane. And that kind of is hunting the ball as well, finding passing lanes, and that's part of that hunting the ball thing. One of the things, you know, going back to this midfielder dodging, if a slide doesn't come to you, um, the expectation for an offensive player to be able to get a good shot off if a slide doesn't come becomes much greater in expectation the older you get. So by the time you get to college, and maybe high school varsity too, if you're an offensive player out there playing offense, you should be able to get a good shot off if no slide comes, especially if it's against a short stick. You know, maybe a long pole, you know, they got some good long poles and you can't get a good shot off. But if you're a midfielder playing against a short stick midfielder and you're an offensive guy, you've got to be able to get a good shot off. You know, in college, when you get to college, if you're, you become a defensive guy if you can't get a shot off. <laughs> you know, that happens pretty quickly. So that's kind of a, like a pride thing for an offensive player to really work on your dodging to the point where you feel good about getting shots off against a short. Because you know, if, if that slide doesn't come, we need those guys to be able to get shots off. And once they establish that they can get good shots off, that's when the slides will start coming faster and faster, and that's when the offense really starts to happen. Other than having, you know, or just talking to the trailing midfielder that's hunting the ball, how do you get them from that? Either just keep careening off the field, off the, you know, out of the way. This guy here? Yeah. So dodge down the side or across or at him? A, a, yeah, dodge at him. So more the sweep the there? The sweep dodge, and then having them sort of all of a sudden run out of the play. Right, so ball's here, and he's going to sweep. And you mean, why wouldn't he come here? No, or when he just continues to sweep. It's, it seems like they're, at least with little, little arcades, they tend to just continually sweep. You know, they they're, they keep moving across the field. and The Dodger or the, no, uh, the other guy? This guy? Yeah, he just he keeps coming this way? Yeah, too, almost too far out of yeah, the way. And then too, to, right. So if his defenseman follows him over there, and his defenseman is going with him, yeah, yeah. then it's almost okay. It's okay, yeah, yeah. it's winning. Right, but the thing to realize is if his defenseman stops and goes to slide, he's got to be in a position now where you're finding passing lanes in there, getting your stick up in a spot where you can catch and shoot and do something with it. Okay, and three on threes, you know, that two on two, same kind of idea with the attack back there. Very similar, you know, this attackman is dodging, and you've got one out on the wing here. As this guy's coming, and we're cutting through, 
seeing the ball, you know, taking your defenseman with you, seeing the ball, but as soon as that defenseman decides to go, it's finding a spot, finding a passing lane in there where you can catch and shoot. Yeah, that, the passing lane thing is, is definitely an important off-ball, uh, good characteristic to have, find those passing lanes. Um, Three-on-threes, you know, same kind of thing, just traditional three-on-threes here, but the focus here is off ball because we're we're working on our dodge or having that same kind of sweep dodge coming hard we're going to work on clearing space and getting through and taking this guy out of the way and what we'll find is this you know a lot of teams slide from the crease first slide will be out of the crease so if you can get good at, as a crease midfielder or a crease attackman or whenever whoever is on offense on the crease you'll hear your defenseman a lot of times saying I'm hot I'm going so they're telling you that they're the slider. So once you know that they're the slider, you can start to have a little bit of fun with them where if this guy is dodging, just get out of there kind of early and see if he'll go with you, you know? Because you know that his responsibility is to slide. If he sees you and wants to go with you, you're taking that slider out of the picture. So that's really a help to your dodger. If he decides that, hey, I'm one of those big meathead defensemen that just wants to go crush people all the time and <coughs> stays with his slide, as you're getting out of there, you're basically just getting wide open, you know, by that little movement. So I, I always love it when I'm on the crease and I hear the guy saying, I'm hot, I'm hot. As soon as my guy starts to move, I'm out of there, curling into a spot, really, where you're just looking to catch and shoot. Um, so it's a nice thing to take advantage of um, as a crease, crease offensive player. Um, the next thing I want to get into is with the, the off-ball picks. Okay? And it's gonna, we're going to stay in the three-on-three. To start talking about off-ball picks, um, I feel like off-ball picking is kind of like a, I don't know, a lost art in some ways. You know, I think it it's, is. I think it's one of the easiest ways to score out there on offense. But it's also, probably one of the hardest things to teach because everyone's focused on what they do when they have the ball in their stick. You know, shooting, dodging. No one's thinking about. Can I go get my buddy open over there? Can I go clear through? And oh, there's somebody, one of my teammates. I'll pick for him. You know, how do you start teaching off-ball picking? Uh, I think the easiest way to do it is in that three-on-three -three set. Okay, we've got our dodger here, and it's going to be a, a drill, just a pass and pick away. I'm sure you guys have heard that, pass and pick away. But you can have a pass and pick away drill where we're passing the ball to the dodger, and then we're picking away. And okay, go get your buddy open. Go get somebody else open out there. Pass and pick away. And now we're still going to be working. I mean, all this you see revolves around a hard dodge. Everything we're doing here revolves around this guy being able to dodge hard. Okay. It's still, we still need that good hard dodge. Okay. As he's dodging hard to the cage, we've got this little pick play happening on the inside. Okay. If the defense sees the pick play, and decides, hey, how are we going to cover this? Switch, switch, whatever it is. Most times, they're going to not be set up to slide to your dodger. So one benefit of a nice off-ball pick play is to take the, take the potential sliders and occupy them with the pick play. So you take those sliders away. Um, another benefit of the pick play is that you've got this guy dodging hard to the cage. You've got another guy springing open, whichever side he decides to come off that pick, just based on how the defender's playing. You've got somebody springing open, and if they do decide to slide, you've got one guy there that's probably going to be wide open looking for the, the, you know, the pass. So I think this is probably one of the more difficult things to cover defensively when you have to worry about sliding to somebody that's dodging hard to the cage and you have to worry about covering an off-ball pick play at the same time. You know, how do you cover those two things? It's, it's really difficult. So when we get to the second phase of our offense, that freelance phase two, a lot of it is going to incorporate off-ball picking when somebody's dodging hard to the cage. This is a little bit more of a scripted off-ball pick just to kind of start teaching it at a basic level, but eventually we want to get to freelance off-ball picking where it's not drawn up yet. Yeah. If you were running that kind of in a freelance office, off offense, that pass and pick away, uh -huh. would you want your attack, if you're doing that pick on the crease, to also rotate the triangle? 
into that space, or would you I mean, just conceptually would you want your if you're doing that much on the crease, let your attack kind yeah, of stay if back? It's a six on six thing. If, if it's live six on six, kind of freelance, you see the still pass people away. I'd probably keep let, it open. Yeah, don't don't yeah. clutter it up. Maybe there. you could have something where you know if this guy's coming here, um, you could maybe you know it depends on if you're going to let this guy choose which side he's going to. It's a little tougher to, to clear somebody through because you don't know which way he's going. Yeah. But if I know maybe that he's coming, you know. Well, one thing you could do is just have these guys kind of switch on the backside. I think anytime you're setting up like a little off-ball pick play, just setting up a little replacement to get people moving on the backside. And maybe you have this guy just go back up the goal just to get people moving and occupy them so they can occupy their defenders. I think it's freelance, so that the, the top right A there, he's got to be, because normally in, in your freelance, he's going to be running through. You've got to be smart enough to say, hey, there's a lot going on in the crease, I'm just going to yeah, switch. Or, yeah, but you'll see when we get to the scripted and the, the freelance, yeah. that it's um, it's not this diff it's not as difficult as this. Okay. Yeah, it follows the rules a little bit cleaner, I think. Yeah. But, uh, so we can do the same kind of three-on-three off-ball picking drill with the attack. And it's I really like running this with the attack, um, probably because... I played attack in high school, and we had some coaches that gave us some freedom to create our own little out-of-bounds plays, little three-man pick plays. And it was always a lot of fun for us to, you know, when the defense is doing their thing, to work out these little pick plays. And, you know, I think it's a, a nice thing to let you, if you have some little crafty attack men and you need something for them to do, like, you guys go come up with a pick play. You know, come up with an off-ball pick play and come back and show it to me and see if we can run it. Um, but some of the real simple, basic ones... We know this is the Dodger. Okay? As he starts making his move coming around, we're going to be coming through and just picking off ball and looking for that pass. This is an important thing too here, lining up on the, the pick on the back pipe to give yourself a little bit more angle when you come around the cage there. But just really simple off ball pick plays. You know? Some other things that you can look at for the attackmen, if you want to set something up for them, there's some other formations you can run these things out of where you actually line up the attack more like this. Okay. So as he's going to, this guy with the ball is going to take kind of a false dodge, like maybe four steps in this direction before he comes back to the side he's going to feed on, just to kind of get things going here. As he's coming here, this attackman's going to come around and set the pick. He's busting back this way, and then you're looking for that little play there. Okay, so you can run a little pick play like that. The complement to that would be the same action behind the goal, just the classic fish hook, and then this guy's going to bust to the back side. So same exact motion, but you get the different people coming for the pass. So there's all sorts of little things that you can create out there for your little crafty attackmen. The key is one person's dodging hard, two people are picking off ball, trying to get over. Okay, the next, the next off-ball pick drill I have written up there is survival, survival drill. This is a you know, classic drill that I've done at every level I've played at, um, every level I've coached at, and it's a two-on-two -on, -two on the inside drill. Okay, so these guys, are, the two middies are working together off-ball to try to get open. There's no rules, there's no anything, it's, free, it's freelance, off-ball picking. All you have to do, you know, recognize where the ball is on the field. That's one thing to be, you know, to figure out where that is, because um, the kind of basic rules of playing inside, when the ball's up top, we want to keep this pick action a little bit lower. When the ball goes behind, we're going to try to raise that pick action a little bit higher. Um, but some things that I like to teach before you go into survival drill, to give them some things to do in there, and how are we supposed to get open freelance? So the one thing that I really, really like um, is that one of my coaches in high school taught us was uh, when you're picking off ball inside this two-man game, you're not picking your teammate's defenseman to get open. You know, the traditional thing is I'm going to pick for you, and you're going to pop and get open. And you can see how the defense, really, if they're playing it correctly, they stand still, they switch on it, they've got it covered, you're fine. So the best way in here to get open offensively is actually to pick your own man and I, I, I call it a seal a lot of times because it gets the idea of sealing off a side so I'm gonna pick here my own man and seal off that side really in effect creating a double pick for my teammate to run off of 
and now there's no way that they can switch there on the back side. So picking your own man is a really crafty way on the inside to get people open. If for some reason this guy does fight through, you can always stop, seal, and the guy that set the pick then can come around the other side. You know, you just, so you can pick and pop and pick and pop, you know, and just keep, keep on going, right, going at that. Okay, so that's one, one thing you can teach in survival for them to get open. Most of us, let's, let's put the ball behind here. Most of us at some point have taught cutting to the ball. If, you're, if your guy turns your back, you know, he's not looking at you, cut to the ball to get open. So the idea of cutting towards the ball as an off-ball player. So maybe I seal down this side, and he comes down and cuts toward the ball to get open. So that's one way, of getting that movement toward the ball. Sometimes the movement can be away from the ball, too. So, you know, depending on how the defenders are set up, there could be a situation where instead of, you know, coming to it, maybe for some reason this guy just has this guy sealed here, and he's got the side, or, you know, I don't know how exactly, you know, to, to draw it up. It just depends on how the situation is. But the idea is instead of flowing to the ball where everybody is looking, everybody wants to flow to the ball. Everyone wants to slide in that direction. But a lot of times the opening can be back and away where nobody's really looking. So fading back away from the ball to get your hands free. And that's more of a float for like a time and room outside shot. Whereas this cut to the ball is just a little kind of catch and shoot real quick. So two different directions of movement off ball. Going to it, fading away from it. Or some other things you can teach. And this drill is, is uh, the attack man throwing the ball back and forth? Yeah, yeah. So now we're, you know, now that you've taught that, and we're ready to go at the drill a little bit, give them a shot at it. You've got your two on two happening on the inside. So you, you start the ball with one of these guys. There's no defenseman around the outside. He holds the ball for like four or five seconds at most. Tries to jam it in there if something's open while these guys are working. If he doesn't have it, throws the ball to the next guy. These guys realizing now the ball's over on that side of the field. Defenders are going to be probably over here now. Now we're trying to, you know, to work that, maybe sealing and fading up here to try to get a shot. Um, if they don't have anything here, again, five seconds or so, pass it back up top and continue working back inside here. You'll find these guys sometimes get really spread out. Um, you also think about this cylinder between the pipes as the key kind of area for off-ball movement when you're on the inside. It keeps, gives you angle on the cage when you're working in there. If you start working out here, even if you catch it, you know, you don't have much of an angle to the goal. So that's another thing to teach, I guess, early before you do this drill is let's try to keep our movement inside the pipes whenever you can. If you find yourself getting extended out here and you don't get the pass, get back in inside between the pipes and, and work from in there. It's nice to coach your offensive guys around the outside. Even if you don't have anything in there, you think he's open just by a little bit, try to jam it in there. You know, just from time to time. I know you're not going to do that in a game, but from time to time, try to jam it in there for this drill because you'll find that, on the one hand, you'll learn that you don't have to be open by five feet to score on the inside. Sometimes it's only a foot, and if the guy catches it, they can score. Maybe you gain a little confidence that you can handle under pressure in there. Um, you can also stick it to your defense a little bit and really make them aware and work. If you do stick one in there when the guy's a foot away from you, you, know, you can get on your defense a little bit that, hey, you guys got to be a little bit more alert in there, you know, not let those passes get in. So even if they're not open by a mile, see if you can have your guys jamming in there a little bit. And that's a great offensive and a great defensive drill to do. You know, it's, a, it's a tough thing defensively to be covering people that are just mad pickers in there. You know, so that's a nice, nice thing defensively to do as well. It gets pretty chippy, you know. That's, that's probably the one drill that I've had the most fights in in my career. <laughs> and defensemen just chopping arms. And, you know, defensemen don't like to get scored on. That's their home base in there. And they don't like to get scored on in there. Was there a question? Yeah, Lauren, you had that as two middies down there on the crease, but is it really an attacker and a midi? Yeah, it That's can be any, any, any combination of offensive players. Okay. Yeah, I was just drawing midfielders. And just as I had defenders in here, there should be your middies should be doing that too. You know, D middies, offense. Every every midfielder should play defense and offense in this drill. You know, an attackman and middies rotating through the offensive side. Okay.
Okay, so through the survival drill, you can start to teach some of that lacrosse IQ stuff of freelance off-ball picking, you know, seeing what the defense is doing to you, seeing where the ball is on the field, and working together to try to get open without a coach saying, you pick there and you pick here, and, you know, do that every time. Uh, I think that, that freelance thing, if you can get that going, is, is a really valuable piece. Um, so the next things we're going to go into here, we're going to start to bring some of these things together. Um, the Yale drill is our four-on-four -four drill. This is another one that I've done at, at every level, um, from you know high school up to professional, and it's really a one-on-one. You know, it's another one-on-one -on -one drill. But what we're adding to this, the skills that we're looking to get out of this, in addition to just the dodging, is for that dodger, when you're going hard to the goal, can you see a slide come? And when the slide comes, can you make the easy pass? Because if you can see the slide and make the easy pass, now we've got numbers on the backside. And that's what this drill is about, is trying to take advantage of the slide in that, and get that uneven situation on the backside. So coach will start with all the balls up top. Okay. You're going to throw the ball to one of these four offensive guys. So let's say we throw it down to this attackman. Okay? So this attackman and this D guy, they're going one-on-one. -on -one. The rule is that you have to go one-on-one -on -one until the defense slides. If the defense doesn't slide, you can't throw the ball to anybody else. These guys aren't in the play until the defense slides. Okay? So contrary to our normal good offensive rules of cutting through when you're adjacent to a dodger, they're not really in the play yet, so you're just kind of maintaining the box, you know, waiting for the defense to slide. So we dodge, okay, coming hard to the cage, the defense goes. Okay. Now you get the defense to slide, now we're live, now we're playing. So the skill is for the dodger to see the slide, find the open guy, and make the easy pass. Now you don't want the dodgers trying to make these skip passes through the defense when they're getting double teamed and they got somebody on them, trying to make that skip pass is a difficult play. So find the easy pass, which is obviously this guy right up here. So that's this dodger skill. For the off-ball player skill, we want to be able to take what the defense gives us. Okay? So as this guy goes, I need this midi to take some of that ground so that when the pass is made, the last thing that we want is this defender to be able to recover and play back, and now we lost the advantage. So the drill is geared towards, can you take the advantage? Once you get the defense to go and that pass is made, can you get the advantage? And now we've got, when this midi comes into play, one, two, three on two. You know, and that's what the drill is all about, getting to, from the four on four to the three on two. And it happens from a hard dodge, drawing a slide, making the easy pass. Now, you know, I love how this works on a whiteboard, nice and easy. Defense goes here, pass goes across. He comes in, our attackman's coming up, he slides here, pass goes down to the attackman who dunks it. <laughs> so, every time. <laughs> but I think it's, a, it's an accomplishment in this drill if you just get that initial good hard dodge, draw the slide, move it to the easy guy, and now you play the three on two. Whatever happens in the three on two happens, but um, you know, at the higher levels, obviously, you want to get, get a goal out of it, but if you can get to the three on two, you're doing some good stuff out there on offense. So in this drill, you would run this attackman going to the goal one time, then the coach would throw it to this midi, run the play again, to this attackman, run it, to this guy, run it. So every, everyone gets to go once in a one-on-one, -on -one, and then you get a new eight in, and then start it up again. Okay, any questions on that Yale drill? Okay. So on that drill, you don't want... For example, if the ball comes up top to the top midi, mm -hmm. you don't want this other midi to be in the play at all until this guy dodges. In other words, he wouldn't sink down or start right. rotating down as he might in yeah. the earlier drills you were talking about. Exactly. They're kind of out of the play. So if he starts dodging this way, he's not going to cut through. He's going to just kind of hang there because we're looking really to get It's almost like, uh, yeah, it's just he's, he's not really in the play okay. until the defense slides. So in this situation, we want to dodge to draw the slide, as soon as the slide comes, now we're looking to make the easy pass and get in now for the three on two. And, and in that drill, if you have, like, that defender's really strong and there's no way that he's going to beat him, could, could he pass the ball? 
or you wouldn't do it. You'd make I, a try. I wouldn't. I'd have him keep going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Never slides. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Take a laugh if you can't beat him. Yeah. That's. I mean, it's further emphasizes the importance of being able to meet someone one on one. Yeah. But uh, yeah. You know. Go until you get a shot or something. Okay. <laughs> so this it could be some of our kids have never come here a long time. Before. <laughs> yeah, give them maybe two or three chances yeah. and then try the next guy. Yeah. So this is a drill for the defenders too. When when would they slide? So, you know, it, there's different uh, ways that you can run this defensively. You can say, we want to we want to help the offense. We want to make our team a better offense. So I want you to go early. You know, I want you to slide early. As soon as that guy starts going. And you think he's a threat, just go. Go earlier than later. Um, you could also say, um, I want you guys, once you've kind of done it for a while, I want you guys to make the decision. You either slide or you don't slide. And maybe that's the thing for the kid that can't beat someone one-on-one. -on -one. You just tell the defense to slide. slide. Just go. Yeah. And that'll get the ball moving. Yeah. So you can play it both ways from the defense to help the offense. If you're playing it really from a true defensive uh, mindset, you're thinking that, okay, we don't have a guy on the crease, so we're in a Jason slide package. We're going to keep this thing tight, so if the ball comes up here, I'm not going to be out on my guys out there. We're going to keep nice and tight because we know we have to rotate to support each other. So when the guy does dodge, he comes here, it's help right, help left. You know, those are the calls in your circle, kind of near man slide package. So we've got our help right here. Okay? Because this guy is nice and tight here, it's an easy thing for him to rotate up and an easy thing for him to rotate back. Staying tight in defense in out of a circle is really key. I think that's one of the things I would harp on. Once these guys start getting spread out, there's just so much opening in there. It's really tough to cover. Okay, the next, uh, next drill we're going to move to here is a five-on-five -five drill. And we're getting progressively kind of Taking the uh, you know the U9s and U11s are getting kind of starting to get left behind here a little bit. This is going to be a tough one for the little guys to do, but let's see. You know maybe you can take a piece of it for the little guys. But the way that the drill works is that there's going to be five offensive players and five defensemen. These could be middies or defensemen or whoever. I'm just going to draw them as defensemen. The coach is going to have the balls up top here and. Coach is going to roll the ball to one of the five offensive players. And so let's say that we roll it to this attackman down here. Okay. The rule is that when you pick up the ball off the ground, two quick passes and a dodge. So on the one hand, we're working on quick ball movement around the outside of the formation. As soon as you pick up the ball, throw it, throw it. There's no picking it up and like, am I going to dodge? Am I going to, what am I going to do? It's like, no, just pick it up and throw it. You catch it from that guy, throw it. So quick ball movement is something we're starting to get, try to get out of this. So he gets it here, he can throw it either way. Let's say he goes one pass, two passes. Okay, so we, we're up here now at this dodger. Um, we all know that he's dodging, because that's the rule in the drill. So what we're going to get out of this is we're going to start to, with our off ball movement, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a scripted thing where we always know which direction he's going to go. We also don't know who's going to dodge every time. You know, he could dodge, we could have a dodger in any spot on the field. So the key for the off-ball players is to realize, are you next to a dodger? If you are next to a dodger, you better be ready to clear space. You know, that's the first most important thing if you're one of those off-ball guys next to a dodger. Second thing is if you're somewhere else on this field, you better be ready to balance if you're an off-ball player. If you see a big gap, you know, we have to be able to balance the formation. Okay. The third thing, the off-ball picks, don't play into this quite as much, but there is possibly some opportunity for that as well. So let's get our dodger here. One, one pass, two passes, here's our dodger. Oh, something I forgot to mention for the defense, when the coach rolls the ball out, you want the defense to all touch their sticks in the middle of the field there. You know, that'll get the defense nice and tight to start out, which is always a nice thing you want from your D, to be playing inside out. So defense starts nice and tight. One pass, two pass. You know, the defense is going to come out and play them. I'm not going to draw the defense all in here, but you guys can imagine the defense will be out there to play. So now we're playing off this guy's the Dodgers. So I'm adjacent. I'm going to cheat halfway. I'm going to cheat halfway, just like we did before, to be in position to clear space. 
Let's say he chooses to dodge down the side. Okay. As he goes down the side, I'm now going to continue through. We're going to balance, balance, and balance. Okay, Balancing formations. One thing that's really key to make a mo making a mo motion offense work is that whenever somebody's dodging to the cage, there's an easy outlet on either side of them. Because if the slide does come, we have to be able to move the ball, whether forward or roll back and throw it behind you. That plays into the balance, the idea of balance. But you can see here with the dodger, we've got an easy outlet from our balance midi up top, and we've got an easy outlet from the attackman coming from behind. So two easy outlets now for the dodger. So as he comes hard to the cage, let's say the defense slides, somebody comes to him, we want to get now get to the rhythm of the offense, which is dodge, Pass, pass, dodge. Dodge, pass, pass, and now we're attacking the backside. Okay. And the same kind of rules here would, have, would apply as this person's dodging. Let's say, you know, let's say this attackman ended up getting all the way through and finds himself out here on this wing. If somebody's dodging right at him, my lacrosse IQ, my basic rules of off ball movement, say that if somebody's dodging at me, I better be able to clear through. And you got to be able to get through there. Some of the off-ball picking and the freelance off-ball picking would come into play where, let's say this guy that dodged down the field and threw the pass and here, you know, maybe this guy is kind of still somewhere down here. A nice freelance off-ball pick play could be this guy, as he's clearing through, sees his teammate here. Maybe he just comes up and sets a pick as this guy comes over the top. You know, there's little things that you can do, and it's, it's obviously hard to show on a whiteboard and it's, until you're out on the field and you actually see how it works, and it's different every time. So it's, it's tough to say this is how it's going to happen. But the key is that if you are clearing through and you see one of your teammates there, why not go set a pick for them? That's one of the great things that you can do as an off-ball player is to set picks for your teammates, get your teammates open. Now, and that plays a little bit into that survival drill idea. Let's reset this here. You know, normally, getting to that second dodge is a great achievement in this drill. Uh, so that's a great achievement if you can get to the second dodge. Getting the, re getting the players to realize who's adjacent on the first dodge and clearing through on the first dodge is a great achievement. You know, especially with the younger guys, that's really you know, a great goal for this drill. So we can set it up again. And let's say that coach rolls it to... The attackman behind the goal. Um, let's actually, you know, let's make it so we get a wing dodge. So we're going to roll it to this attackman. We go pass, pass. Here's our dodge. And so now we're dodging on the wing. And nine times out of ten, this guy is going to be coming top side, right? That's, that's the most effective dodge for that attackman. He's not going to want to go behind the goal. But right when we know that he's the dodger, this is the key player. Adjacent player to the side that we're pretty sure that he's going to dodge to. So he's got to be able to take his guy out of there and clear that space for this dodger. And this guy is thinking about balance to make that easy outlet. And as a midfielder, one of the things that I always loved was <coughs> instead of just clearing through and taking my guy out of there, that's a great chance to clear through and maybe set one of those off-ball picks where that guy can then come over the top. But he's not really going to cut into the play, you know, right to where the guy's dodging. It's more of a float, you know, and getting to a spot where, you know, this is out of scale, but maybe that's like a 13-yard shot or so. But it's just a little simple kind of off-ball pick play that stems from, hey, I'm clearing through. Oh, there's my buddy. I'm going to stop and set a pick for him and let this other guy come across. Um, so it's, it's definitely a, a tough thing to get going. I mean, I think this is a great goal for like three-quarters of the way through the season. They start getting that idea of, instead of just cutting through, I'm going to see if I can start setting some off-ball picks as I'm cutting through. Okay, so in this situation here, we've come across, let's say he dodges, okay, doesn't get anything, a slide comes, one pass, two passes, and now we're dodging down the side. If I'm this attackman here, and I see somebody dodging downhill right at me, my lacrosse IQ, the thing I need to know is I've got to get through and clear that space and let this dodger come. And here's my easy outlet. If a slide comes, pass, pass. Hopefully we've got something over, someone over on the backside there. 
you know, to keep the, keep the balance of the formation and keep the thing going. Getting to three dodges is, is like probably not going to happen. But in theory, you can keep the dodge, pass, pass, dodge thing going if you have balance, you know, if you're filling spots around the outside. Uh, with respect to scale, that's not the real box. You're not suggesting, is that the box? Um, in some ways it is. I, I think the middies should be operating out at the top of the box here, you know, most of the time. I feel like the attack men, maybe, maybe this is a little bit more inside, they're a little bit wide there. I think for the middies it's the scale. I think with the attack men, they're, it's a little wide, but something I see a lot when I go out to practices is people are so tight. You know, and part of it might just be that it's tough to throw a 20 yard pass. Um, and that's fine, you know, you got to bring it in a little tighter. But I've done, um, you know, stick work drills when I go out and do some guest coaching with some older teams. And, you know, the expectation is that if you're playing, you know, JV or, you know, varsity for sure, that if we're setting up, setting up in this, uh, you know, and this is really to scale, this kind of look, you know, I've done stick work drills before where all we're doing is, is throwing the ball around the outside as fast as we can do it. And nice, long passes, you know. This guy starts here, throw it, throw it, throw it. Get used to throwing the ball around the outside with long passes. Maybe you come to meet it, turn to the outside, throw here. You come to meet it, turn to the outside, throw here. But instead of just doing straight line stick work drills, if this is what we're looking to get out of our offense, then let's drill that a little bit. It's not a bad thing to do if you're running this kind of thing. Okay, so that's the, uh, you know, the, the 5 on 5 the, the rhythm of the offense kind of drill. Um, I really think that's a, a great thing for recognizing when you're next to a Dodger that you got to get through and clear space for him because it happens, it's different every time, you know. That all of a sudden it's two passes and oh my god, the guy next to me is a Dodger, I better be getting through. Being able to realize that as an off-ball player is one of the biggest things. You know, it's one of the great achievements, I think, for a, you know, a, a young team. When you start getting your guys to see that, man, things just start opening up. Yeah, that's, that's probably one of the biggest keys to freelance offense right there. It's not having a coach tell you, you have to cut through now. It's seeing that I have to cut through now because he's dodging. So that drill really helps to reinforce that. Okay, so the, uh, now let's get to the end, the six on six. So two different phases of our offense that we're going to talk about. A scripted phase and a freelance phase. Um, and, you know, to start, this is kind of the scale. You know, you want these guys nice and spread out out there. So when we bring the ball down on offense from the defensive end, Okay. You probably are going to have your slow break where you get the ball through X and you try maybe you've got some stuff, some action happening there. Once you, you realize you don't get anything out of your slow break and you're setting up into your offense, nice and spread out, we're getting the ball around, we're trying to get the ball to the Dodger. Who's the Dodger that's going to start the offense? And the style of offense that I'm going to show has three different options for starting the offense. Two of them happen with this midi, one of them happens with this attackman behind the goal. So the first option is going to be this midfielder going for that sweep, that strong you know, right-handed move. So every other guy on the field now, as we're passing the ball around, is not thinking about going to the cage. Because if I just all of a sudden decide to go to the goal, no one's ready to move for me. It's just going to be a total cluster. You know, it's, it's not really what we're looking for. So getting on the same page from the start is the key. So this is the guy that's going. We get the ball out to him. He's in a decent spot to dodge right now, but if he's not really in that, you know, maybe he catches the ball kind of down here. It's not like the best dodging spot. Ideally, he wants to be up nice and high here so he can continue to throw the ball, get up to his dodging spot, get the ball back. And now when our midi catches the ball nice and high in that spot, that's a real nice signal to the rest of the offense that we're ready to go. Okay? We're going to start the offense now. So when we start the offense, it's going to be just like that one-on-one -on -one plus five. A nice strong one-on-one -on -one here, and I'm not going to draw the defense in to clutter it up. Where's, Where's your other midi? Your other midi's in there on the crease, Oh, right? sorry. Yeah. yeah, good one. Here we go. So we got our other midi in there on the crease. We've got our, our dodger. 
So as soon as we know he's going to dodge, we're going to cheat, 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 cheat. And we're all starting to anticipate that dodge and starting to get through on our movements. The dodge happens the way we expect it. it comes. We're going to get through. This MIDI is continuing through. This MIDI is balancing back up top. This attackment is continuing through. Here's our outlet and our balance back behind. So now we've got this whole side. We've got this whole side cleared out for our stud right-handed MIDI coming for his strength down the side. That's the phase one dodge. Really scripted, five guys moving, one guy dodging hard. We all know where he's going. We're all getting moving together. Hey, if the slide comes, which we expect most teams are going to get one good slide, you know, at least one slide, we're looking to get into the rhythm of the offense. Dodge, pass, pass, dodge. So we dodge, easy pass, pass here, behind, second pass to the back side, and then dodge. And this is our second phase dodge, back behind the cage here. Okay, on this second phase dodge, this is the freelance dodge, where there's no scripted movements. This isn't triangles rotating. This is just like basic lacrosse IQ stuff, which say that if I'm dodging here, and I'm this attackman, and I've gotten back out to this wing, I better get through back there and clear that space. You know, again, clearing space, most basic thing you can do. Maybe I'm you know, this midfielder who has cut through to the crease down here, and this attackman is in here too. Now this is like the ultimate goal that you're trying to get out of this offense, is in this phase two dodge, you've got two players that are kind of cutting through in their movements, they're around each other, to have the realization to say, Oh, there's my buddy. I'm going to go up and set a pick for him and let him come across there. You know, now if you get somebody dodging hard to the cage, you have an off-ball pick play happening, and you've already gotten the defense to slide to one half of the field, that's where your scoring opportunities are going to come from. You know, the first dodge, it's not as much the scoring opportunity. You know, I think the defense will get that one. This is where they come from. So the, I think what you're coaching to your players is that I want you guys to have fun and play and do what you want and like and uh, and be athletes out there and make plays but the only way that you're allowed to get to that part of the offense where you can make plays is if you do it my way first for that first dodge you have to do this I want you to do this every time but once you do that this is where the real opportunities are going to come up and this is where I want you guys to, to be lacrosse players and, and see what see what they give you see what's in front of you and, and make plays so if you've got a strong left hand and quick stick in that Midi on the pick, he's got a real good situation. And this guy here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be a nice little thing. And, you know, you could go so far as to trying to set it up, you know, play with this stuff too if you really wanted to. You know, this is, I, I, I like to, to, to get away from, um, with a base offense, I like to have it have a lot of flow to it to where it's not, you know, other than a concept like this, it's not something where this happens every time, you know. You can set up plays where you have little picks and stuff happen where it's every time and you try to get goals out of it. They're nice to have little plays like that. But for the general flow of an offense, I like these things to be freelance situations where if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it might not be there. So let's say this guy dodges and he doesn't get anything out of it. If you've got you know, this midfielder who rotated up, if you've got some room up there um, and you get the one pass, you know, so we've got that guy there. The person that dodged, you know, this guy originally dodged, he's probably somewhere over on this side of the field. Um, hopefully as the ball's coming around and this guy's dodging, he's kind of balancing back up a little bit. So it would be one pass, two passes, and now attacking the back side down there. And so you can keep that kind of rhythm going. But again, it doesn't happen if you don't have balance. You know, if, you, if you're all sucked in there, if this guy dodges and thinks he's done, where he dodges and just goes right for the ball in there, and now we have no support up on this side of the field. We can't continue the ball movement, and things kind of die. So it's, uh, you know, that, that balance is a crucial part of it. Okay, so that's the first option when you dodge with that midi with a sweep. So that could be a coach calling that, saying, okay, for the first quarter here, every time we get the ball in our offense, we're going to start our offense with the sweep. And maybe the next quarter now, the coach says, okay, 
we're going to start the offense from behind. Okay. So the attackman behind is going to be our dodger. So now when we get the ball around, we're passing it, passing it, passing it. Okay, he's at our, that's our dodger. Now we're getting ready to go because we know he's the one to start it. So we're going to cheat halfway, cheat halfway. The middies, you know, they can't really move at this point. They got to wait for this guy to go. So let's say he comes, continue through, bounce behind, mid midi triangle rotates. Okay, same exact thing, just flipped upside down. This is our phase one dodge. Really scripted, everybody moving together. As he dodges, if a, sli if a slide comes, we're looking to pass, pass, and dodge. And this is the phase two dodge. Okay. That's the one that's more freelance. That's the one where this attackman, this midi, whoever you find yourself inside, that's where you're looking for the off-ball picks. Okay. So that's survival drill on the inside there. If you see your buddy around in there as you're cutting through, you know that this guy's dodging hard. I'm not going to stand and watch him dodge. That's the worst thing you can do is just stand there. Um, as you're clearing space, as you're getting away there, see which one of your teammates are around, work together, maybe you can get a little off-ball pick while that dodge is happening. Okay? If a slide comes, hopefully we've got an outlet to pass, pass, and attack again on the backside. But I think this is a great goal to get to that second phase dodge. And if you can get there and start working these off-ball picks on the second phase dodge, then I think you can see some good things happening. The third, third piece here, and this is something that, you know, that, that comes into play when you start thinking about, oh my God, all we do is sweep. Like if we're playing against a team that just sees we sweep all the time, like aren't they going to figure that out? And what are we going to do when they just see that we sweep all the time? So the complement to the sweep, and one of those first uh, midfield dodges that we showed is that the alley dodge of going down the side. So the way that this offense would work with the alley dodge is, is a little different. It breaks some of the rules, um, so, but it's a nice complement to have in there. So the beginning of it is the part that breaks the rules. So when we get the ball to our dodger, okay, we know that he's going to be dodging down the side now, down this area. But it's not really the, that first dodge isn't the one that we're trying to really get the goal on. What we're trying to do is get the defense to slide with that initial dodge. Here's the slider right here. So as we dodge down the side, I'm trying to get this guy to go. Okay. Because I'm not really going to score here, I'm not worried about cutting through for him. This is really just like a dummy dodge to get the slide to come. And then when I pass, then we're going to be really in the play for real. So it's dodge, get the slide to come. Instead of throwing the ball down the side, okay, with the alley dodge, you can just quickly turn to the outside, and the pass comes back up to this midi who has drifted to the middle a little bit, and now this is our dodge. Okay. This is the dodge that we're really trying to get something out of. This is the dodge that we're going to cut through on, rotate and rotate, and this guy is going to be kind of hunting the ball on the inside there. Um, but this is a really effective play. Um, it's it's similar in some ways to what we did before. You're drawing a slide and quickly moving the ball to the back side. Except that, you know, in one pass, you're getting the ball there. Um, when I played at Princeton with this guy, Josh Sims, who was a you know, really great midfielder, he would attract so much attention as a midi. And as soon as he would start dodging, everybody would slide to him. So Josh was this midi, I was this guy, and he just, you know, would attract everybody, throw it to me, and, and you'd have nobody down that side there. It was a really great play for me. I like that one. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Uh, but we just call that M&M. &M, you know, a little two-man midi game. Go down one side, get the slide to come, and bang it across. Okay. In this situation here, if the slide does come to this guy now over here, if somebody slides, you know, we're looking for that pass, pass, dodge again on the back side. Similar kind of, of philosophy there. So the, the tough thing, this roll to the outside is a little bit of a difficult skill to teach, and it's something you would definitely have to practice. You know, it's one of those things that as you're dodging and the slide comes, when you switch hands, it's almost like 
keeping the stick out in front of you, kind of away from the defense. And it's really just a little flip to get it over to them. But the, the tendency, I think, is for players that as they dodge down and start turning, they hang their stick back and it gets easily checked. So as they're turning, you, know, you kind of like keep the stick in front of you and you, it's like you know, your shoulders are protecting it as you're going away. So that's a little bit of a difficult skill, but something to teach if you're going to implement this little, this little play here. And you have yeah. to be looking back far enough to know that there's not somebody that's going to come intercept it too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got, you figure, you've got the defender that's playing you is in here. Um, this guy, this defender is probably kind of dropping. Pan chain. Yeah. Dropping in a little bit. So there probably isn't anybody up here. Although, it is nice for this midfielder over here. He's on the side over here. As this guy starts going down the side, you really want to drift to the middle. Get to the middle, drift to the middle to make that an easier pass, like kind of high to the middle. So that's an easy pass. And then the skill for this midi, you know, when I do shooting drills, uh, a lot of some private lessons with guys and with midfielders, the thing I always, one of the drills I always do with them is to, I stand down on this side and I have them drift to the middle. Uh, it's almost like a sidestep or, or a little jog to the middle, but to be able to get there, get there, get there, catch it, and as they're catching it, change direction quickly to get back down the side. So that's the skill for this guy. Get there, get there, get there, catch it, and be gone right down the side. You know, quickly attack back down the side there without kind of catching it, looping around, and like making a big play. It's just really quick, catch it, and go down the side. Um, so, you know, those are, those are three options, three different ways to, to start the offense. But that's really it, guys. That's a, you know, a way to start from the beginning of, with your dodging, to build up through different team skills, building blocks, teach the freelance side of it, get some lacrosse IQ stuff going. Um, that four-on-four -four yell drill you could do a couple times a week in practice. It can be a great one. Um, the, the rhythm drill, five-on-five, five, I think for the older guys, is probably more realistic. And then you've got your two phases of offense. If you want to run a 2-2-2 two, 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 or a 1-4-1 one, one, or a circle, whatever formation you want to run out of, you can apply a lot of these same concepts. First phase dodge, one guy goes hard in a very scripted dodge, the other five guys move. Okay, you, got, you can figure out how you want your guys to move in a 1-4-1 one, one, or in a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. If a slide comes, two quick passes and dodge again. You know, it doesn't really matter what formation, so if you want to tweak this to other formations, you, it's pretty easy to do that, I think. Um, but Taking little pieces of, of this, you know, take what works for it for your guys, and you know, hopefully that'll that'll help out a little bit. Uh, that's it, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any any questions on anything? One actually. Yeah. That, a lot of this is the with the younger kids when they draw that slide coming because you dodge, you draw the slide, you do a lot of these drills. I see a lot as soon as that pressure's coming and they try to dump the ball. That pass is horrible, right? Yeah. So any any good drills just to learn how to when you when you're getting slid on, not panic. You, you know, just yeah. Any ideas on that? Yeah. Just, That's tough. Yeah, it's tricky, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. I feel like I see a lot of times out there these all or nothing plays when yeah. people are dodging. It's either they miraculously get through the slide and score, so, right. or the ball's on the ground. It's a turnover. That dump is hard. You can almost slide on it. It's hard. Yeah, the exit the strategy. Yeah. What's well, the exit strategy? What I've kind of noticed is like they just stop their feet and they just got to kind of keep moving. And that's yeah. the main thing. It's like once they stop their feet, then the defense is really coming over the top with those checks. Yeah. So. yeah. It also could be recognizing the slide early, early and knowing that you crushed. don't. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to carry the ball into the slide. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you see him coming, a couple yeah. steps. It, the step away is a thing I teach. The step away. So you're dodging, you're dodging, you see the slide, step yeah. away, get your hands free, and yeah. try to make the pass. Yeah, because yeah, the kids are waiting for the other, for the defenseman to be right on top of them. Right. And they're trying to. And the make stick that is pass. there, and the check, and they're in, you know, they don't have their hands free. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. kind of on that point. One of the things I've done with my kids in the early part of the season is. Yeah. I will, leave, I'll, as the coach, I will be the slider, I'll be the defender. Absolutely. So that way, because sometimes in practice you get kids who are practice all-stars who will just assault the player and, right. you know, defensively. Yeah. Um, in the early couple of weeks, this is sometimes I'll do it either as the one-on-one -on -one defender or as the slide. Yeah. And then you can kind of talk them through it a little bit and also adjust the pressure accordingly to the yeah. player. You know, just in those first couple of weeks, just yeah. to kind of get them so they know. Because the first time it happens, especially for the younger guys, yeah. they, their yeah. instinct yeah. is either to freeze up or run as hard as they can. Right. Right. There's really yeah, no in between. Point. Where they just yeah. chuck it in the direction where they think someone right. might be. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Cool.